So what you're seeing here is part of Appendix B from your Hibbler text. And what Appendix B contains is some uh, simple geometric, simple, but beam design and column cross sections. So this is a wide flanged beam because you can see here the wide flanges, right? And um, you have the designation. So this is the depth of the wide flange beam. So in this case, it'd be 310 millimeters. This is the weight per linear meter of the beams. So when you're doing dead load design for your um, beams or columns, you have that. It does the math for you for the cross-sectional area. And then it gives you some of the properties here for depth and the web thickness and the flange thickness. And then also what's nice here is here's the centroidal moment of inertia about the x-axis and the y-axis. We have the section modulus, which we have not talked about in this class. And then we have R for the radius of gyration. So all this information is given to you in Appendix B of your text. This is also information that you can find in steel manuals, aluminum manuals, and those kinds of things. And we are going to be using Appendix B for our next example. So let's say that we are given a wide flanged beam, which you're going to have to forgive me because I'm going to draw this by planes. So if we looked at the side of our column here, we would see the sides of our flanges, right? Here and here and then there would be the middle section. So that's what I've got drawn here. So for those of you that like ordinates, that would mean this is my Y direction and this is my Z direction. And I want the total height of my column here to be seven meters. Now I know that this column wants to bend about its y-axis. How do I know that? Because if I look at all these y-values, they are much, much, much smaller than my x-values, which means those are the weaker axes. So I'm going to take care of that by coming over here in my x-direction bending, Okay, which means that we're looking at the top of the flange. So this is my little dotted line of the web going into the page. And you are X and you are Z. All right, this is still seven meters tall, but I'm going to shore this up by adding rollers here. And what the rollers allow is for this column in the um, XZ plane to bend in and out of the page, right, where those big flanges are that support bending, but um, if I try to move it in plane with the page, it's not going to be going anywhere uh, at the very top because I've got those rollers there. So what I've created is one direction that's fixed free and one direction that's fixed pinned. Ah, see, interesting, 1600 kilonewtons. I'm putting a big old load on here so that it falls within my range here. Um, I'm going to make this all out of steel, so that is 200 gigapascals for my modulus of elasticity. I want to find the lightest, that's the second number here, W310, uh, W310 to support the load with that seven meter length. Okay, so I have P critical, I have E, and what I'm looking for is I in this case. All right, so solution. P critical is equal to pi squared E I over L E squared. Fun thing is, in one direction, I've got fixed free. The other direction, I have fixed pinned. So we're going to have to do twice the work. 
So looking at y direction, okay, and what I mean by y direction is it wants to bend in this zy plane. So that means my elastic curve will be going this way. And this is my fixed free. So I'm going to come down here. This is my fixed free direction. Okay, my P critical is 1600 kilonewtons is equal to pi squared times E 200 gigapascals times I all over my effective length. So that's two times seven meters squared. Okay, now I've got kilonewtons, gigapascals, and meters. Um, gigapascal is one kilonewton per millimeter squared. So I'm going to convert my length to millimeters because you see here all of my inertias are in millimeters to the fourth. So I'm going to multiply you by 1,000 millimeters per meter and square that because I have square meters in my denominator. And solving for inertia, I get an inertia value of 158.8 times 10 to the sixth millimeters to the fourth. Okay. Come back to that in a second. I'm going to solve for my x direction next. And my x direction is going to be bending in this xz plane, which means it's going to have this shape, which is a pin fixed. Okay? It's not a pin, it's a roller in this one direction. We're calling it a pin because it's preventing horizontal displacement but allowing for rotation, okay? So pin is the finger quotes term. It's not a pin because it's, it's only preventing translation in one direction, but um, it's the 0.7 value and that's the important part. So this is pin fixed direction. And using the exact same p-critical equation, 1600 kilonewtons, is equal to pi squared times 200 gigapascals times inertia all over this time 0 0.7 times 7 meters squared doing the exact same conversion 1000 millimeters per meter squared we find that we require an inertia of 19.5 times 10 to the sixth millimeters to the fourth. All right, now you're saying, ah, oh, weak axis, that's the smaller number, that's 19.5 designed to that. Well, sort of. So I've got this I-shaped cross section, which means if I am bending in the Y direction, then I have to bend it about the X axis to get it to move that way. Similarly, if I am bending it in the x direction, it has to rotate about the y axis to bend that way. Okay, so looking at ix and iy here, and these are minimum values, right? If we have larger values, we have less stress, right? Bigger inertia, less stress. So I need to find a value that's equal to or greater than 158.8 for that x direction. So coming here, I don't have 158.8, I have 145 and 165. So this one is going to require a W310 by 74 for the inertia, okay? Now for my Y value, I need 19.5. That's going to fall between these two values. Pick the larger value. So this is a W310 by 67. Okay, 67 is lighter than 74, so pick that one. No, because we need it to support in both directions. So the larger cross section is actually the design cross section because um, 
That's the controlling cross section, okay? It controls in the Y direction. We want it to bend about those flanges because that's what the flanges are there for, for bending. So we're gonna pick that larger cross section, okay? And that's good because if we look over here in the Y direction, that means that the Y inertia is 23.4, which is definitely greater than 19.5. So we're going to tell our construction engineers to design with a W310 by 74.